welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market, where I take a look at the luxury market, the Manhattan market, and the Brooklyn market. I do it because I want you to be informed. It never hurts when you're a consumer to be informed. Welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. This is for the week of October 31st to November 6th. We're going to start as we always do with the luxury market. There were 14 contracts signed at 4 million and above. This is the second week in a row that we have seen a decline in contracts signed uh, in the luxury market and for fewer than the previous week. Condos outsold co-ops seven to five and there were two townhouses in this mix. The number one contract was 17B at 215 East 19th Street. It was asking 15.3 million. It was raised from 15 million when it started marketing off of floor plans in September of 2016. The condo has over 4,700 square feet. It includes four bedrooms and five and a half bathrooms. It has a 29-foot living room, 38-foot kitchen and dining room, 24-foot master bedroom, and it features 14-foot ceilings with city views. The building known as the Gramercy Square Condominium has 223 units and 18,000 square feet of amenities, which include a fitness center, a 75-foot pool, a children's playroom, a screening room, a club lounge, and a garage. The number two contract was a townhouse at 109 East 64th Street. It was asking 9.95 million. It was listed at the end of September. The five-story, 20-foot wide brick townhouse has almost 5,000 square feet. It includes six bedrooms and six and a half bathrooms. It has an elevator and a 30 foot living room with 11 and a half foot ceilings, as well as a garden. The house has been owned by the same family for 50 years and it needs to be renovated. Annual real estate taxes total $121,602. Now we're going to take a look at the stats for last week. The total weekly asking price sales volume was $90,950,000. The average asking price, $6,496,429. The median asking price, $5,475,000. The average discount from original ask to last asking price, 3%, and the average days on market, 464. Okay, that is it for the luxury market. We're going to be keeping our eye on this because we have seen now, this is the second week in a row, we've seen a bit of a decline in the contract activity. It's seasonal, of course, contract activity begins to slow down this time of year, but let's see what happens as we progress even further into this fall market. As always, if you have any questions, please post them below. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have about the real estate market here in New York City. Okay, that's it for the luxury market. Now let's take a look at what's going on in Manhattan. Let's take a look at what happened in Manhattan last week. So starting with the one week look at the market, we see the supply is 278. That's down a little bit, six, a little over 6%. This is a seasonal effect to a certain extent. This is what we would expect to be seeing this time of year. The contract signed 182, that was up almost 9%. So we see a little bit of a of a rise in the contract activity from the week before. And the off-market properties, I think, are also important to note here. 284, that is up 67% and change. So yes, we remain in a buyer's market, but what we're also seeing is that the inventory is down a bit. We're also seeing that the contract activity is up a bit. And we're also seeing that many sellers, if they cannot get their deal done in this market, are opting 
to take their properties off the market. Now take a slightly broader view of this market and we take a look at the last month, what we're seeing is the supply is 1,422. That is down almost 32% over month over month. The contract signed is up 748, up a little over 27%. And the off-market 907 properties, almost 61% rise in that. So again, very consistent with what we are seeing in the one week look as well, that we don't have a lot of inventory um, that is declining. We're seeing a slight uptick in contract activities, still below where we had hoped it would be. We were hoping it would be in the 900s, but we didn't make it. Probably the most notable thing here is that sellers are not panicking. They have decided if this is not the market for them, they're gonna take advantage of other options available to them, such as renting out their property. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So now we're gonna get into this more micro look at the numbers, the more detailed charts that show the supply, days on market, monthly new supply, price per square foot, uh, monthly closed sales, etc. Let me know if you have any questions about these charts. I think we can um, shift over now and take a look at this Manhattan supply chart. This is for any bedroom configuration in all of Manhattan at any price point. We can see that the supply at 7,511 is up almost 30% year to date. It is down a little less than a percent from last month, and it is up only 0.5% from last year. Just gonna to move to the pending sales. Again, this is for all of Manhattan at any price point. Uh, at 2,605 pending sales, we are down almost 35% from year to date, down a little over 6% from last month and down a little over 32% from last year. This is stating the obvious. We are down overall in our contract activity from last year in a bit and certainly from the beginning of this year. Does that mean that things are crashing and burning? No, it does not seem to be that. We're gonna have to, you know, this is just such a strange market. It's kind of a strange, I would call it kind of a lackluster market, this fall market. The, the supply beginning its seasonal decline, the pending sales approaching 2019, 2020 levels on the downside. And we're kind of looking at where this market is going right now. Yes, we are in a buyer's market, Mostly it's the perception. Uh, we are seeing a bit of a decline in values. We don't have all the data on that yet, but you know, likely seven, eight percent, possibly more. Um, but we just don't know hundred percent. In the meantime, we're seeing that buyers are, at least in the last week, have gotten enthusiastic again, and we've seen an uptick in the contract activity. One thing, and, and I don't, I'm not gonna share a chart on this, but I just want to mention that even though the rates have gone up and even though contract activity declined a little, got a little wobbly this fall, it's being somewhat balanced out by the fact that we don't have a ton of inventory and that, as you can see, a lot of the sellers are opting to sit this market out. One reason that they may feel that that is a good play for them has to do with the rental market. So with the rental market also being very strong right now, it is perhaps um, creating more pressure on the potential buyers. And if they do the math, they may determine that with prices being as high as they are for rentals in Manhattan, they may be better off purchasing in the long run. Usually we start to see a softening of the rental market right around now, but we're not seeing that. Uh, of course, we are still in November, so let's see what happens as we move through the rest of the year. That is it for Manhattan. We're gonna continue to keep an eye on these numbers. 
Again, this is a strange kind of market, <laughs> a lot of moving pieces. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I really want you to have the as much information as you possibly can get so that you can make informed decisions if you're thinking about buying or selling or if you're a property owner and you wanna know how this market is affecting your current position, you're trying to figure out if you wanna list your home or your investment property, or you wanna perhaps sit this one out. Okay, let's take a look now at what's going on in Brooklyn. So now what happened in Brooklyn last week? Well, as I have mentioned in the last few weeks, Brooklyn is faring a little better than Manhattan. We remain in a neutral market. If we take a look at the one week snapshot of what's going on, we can see that the supply is 185. That is down a little more than 8%. The contract sign up a little bit, about 6%, 150 contracts were signed last week. And off-market properties, wow, 160, that is up 95.12%. This is what's keeping Brooklyn in a neutral market. And we're gonna take a look, also kind of take a broader look now at that one month view. And we're seeing that the supply is 825, down almost 21%, contract sign up almost 22%, 535, off market for the month, 383, up 14.33%. Again, we are in a neutral market in Brooklyn. If we look at this more detailed chart, uh, which I like to share with you guys because I know a lot of you really like to dive into the, a lot of the details about this market. Feel free to look at these charts and then let me know if you have any questions. If we look at the supply overall in Brooklyn, 3421, that is up 6% year to date. It is down less than 1% from last month and down almost 18% from last year, pending sales in Brooklyn, down 27% from year to date, down almost 5% from last month, and down almost 30% from last year. But because these things are staying in balance, including these off-market properties, it really gives Brooklyn the advantage of staying in this kind of neutral market. And I just wanna draw your attention to this market pulse chart. If you look at what happened, what is happening right now, you can see that in October, we were on the decline and declining kind of through this neutral market, even speculating that we might kind of tip over and go in fully into a buyer's market. But now you can see at the very tail end, in the moment that we are at pretty much right now, you can see this slight rise in this chart. Does it mean that we hit the bottom and the opportunity, the really big opportunity for buyers has, has passed us by? Possibly. What I think it does is it, it is a signal because there's low inventory, because the contract activity is keeping pace with that. And we are seeing that a lot of um, sellers are opting to take their properties off the market. If you're a buyer and you are determined to buy in this market, whether Brooklyn, which we're talking about right now, or Manhattan, don't wait too long. Um, it, especially in Brooklyn, as you can see, there is some suggestion here that we may have hit the bottom and now we're kind of ticking back up. The Brooklyn market is also being impacted by what's happening in the rental market in Brooklyn. The rental market in Brooklyn is even stronger than in Manhattan. We have seen no decline in prices in Brooklyn. And so buyers, after you kind of run your numbers, you'll be in a better position to decide whether you are better off purchasing something that you will own and see the appreciation in, or whether you're still better off renting given the change in the interest rates. Um, every situation is quite unique and so it's a very personal decision. The point I'm trying to make here is don't wait too long. If you are thinking about buying, this is a really great market. You're going to definitely have 
um, some leverage here that you haven't had in a very long time. And like everything, it, nothing lasts forever. So don't wait too long. See if there's something out there for you. And sellers, if this is not your market, you may want to think strongly about taking your property off the market, riding this one out. And if you're permitted to rent your properties out, go ahead and rent it out because in the meantime, you can be monetizing your property while you're waiting to see what the market is going to do long term. All right, that's it for this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. If you have any questions, please post them below. Please feel free to reach out to me, email me. Happy to answer any questions that you might have about the market here. In the meantime, I will be back next week with the up to the minute news on what is going on in the New York City real estate market from the luxury market to the Manhattan market to the Brooklyn market. In the meantime, take care.